Art is a powerful language. It doesn't speak with words, but with emotions and sensations, which makes it universal. It transcends cultures and even time. It helps us understand the past, the present, sometimes even the future. Art is a window to someone's mind. It's representation. Art is one of the things that makes us human. If you ever have the chance to travel to South Dakota, you might see one of the most beautiful sculptures ever. It's a 50 feet tall sculpture of an indigenous woman dressed in her traditional clothing and holding a large star kilt. She's made of stainless steel and decorated with diamond shaped glass panels. Her face is one of authority and love at the same time, as if she's a mother looking over her children. To design the face, the artist used three models of three different ages and created this feeling of timelessness, as if she's both old and young. The lead person of this project was Dale Lamphar, and he was accompanied by a team of artists and engineers. After all, it is a 50 feet tall statue, so you will need some help. The sculpture I was describing so far in a pretty fangirly way is titled Dignity, and it was announced in 2014 and completed in 2016. Four years later, in 2020, our disaster of a year, I found a picture of it online and my first reaction was, oh my god, she's gorgeous. I'd say so far, it's probably one of my favorite artworks of all time. I felt also really inspired, like I wanted to create something of my own. I wanted to create my own dignity. At first I wasn't sure what exactly I should do, but I noticed that the dignity statue has pieces of stained glass in her kilt and on her dress, and I thought, hey, that's a great idea. I already played around a little bit with kind of the stained glass style. I made um, I made fan art to a Magic the Gathering character, so I thought, hey, maybe I can do that. I kind of I'm kind of familiar with it, and that's where the basic plan was born. I wanted to paint an indigenous person as a stained glass figure, but here I encountered a huge roadblock: my ignorance. I learned a little bit about indigenous culture and history class back in high school. Like a tiny snippet, tiny taste. But honestly, it's kind of disappointing how how little in the end I learned. Because it was mostly, mostly what I was taught is the colonialism and the genocide, which is very important, especially in history class. But at the same time, I feel like it's important to represent indigenous people as if they're not a relic of the past. They're still here, they're still strong, still very much thriving. So I think it's very important to represent them in this way as well, and not only as the victim of the Europeans. It's dehumanizing in a way. But I don't know, that's just my perspective as someone from outside Canada. So, I realized that it's up to me to educate myself. Boohoo. But I had just one tiny problem, which is the fact that there is so much to learn. There are so many tribes, so many different nations, and they all have their different culture and their different traditions, and I just had no idea where to start. Luckily for me, I have a friend. I approached my friend, and she was generous enough to help me out. Her family belongs to the Ojibwe people, who are the second largest First Nation population in Canada. We talked about my idea and she helped me find a direction for this project. That was the first time I learned about the Jingle Dance. She also helped me a lot with my own self-education, because as I said, I had no idea where to start and she gave me a direction and that's all I needed to continue. Let me tell you what I know about this tradition. The jingle dress gets its name from the many metal cones on its skirt. These cones create a very soft jingling sound when the dancer dances, 
They're supposed to imitate the sound of raindrops. They were originally crafted from rolled tin can lids, but nowadays they are machine made. The tradition of the jingle dance began with the Ojibwe tribe in Ontario, Canada, in the beginning of the 20th century. The dance later spread to other regions like Manitoba and even the US, and was adopted by other tribes. While researching the jingle dress online, I found three different origin stories. One version states that a medicine man dreamed of four women who showed him how to make the dress, how to perform the dance, and what music it goes with. When he woke up, the medicine man and his wife made four dresses and called four women to dance wearing them. Later they told their tribe of the dream and taught them to dance. The second version is similar to the first, but it details that the reason why the medicine man had his vivid dreams was because his daughter was ill. During a drum ceremony, the medicine man and his wife brought their ill daughter and told the people of his dream. After the ceremony, he called the four women to dance. As the night progressed, the people sang, the drums played, and the women danced, and the girl slowly went from laying down to following the women and dancing with them. The third version of the story is actually the one I saw more often, and it tells that the ill girl was actually the medicine man's granddaughter. In his dream, he saw a spirit wearing the jingle dress. He was told that if he puts the dress on his granddaughter, she would become well again. During their ceremony, the tribe had to carry the girl at first, but she got better and eventually could walk and dance on her own. The jingle dance was adopted by women as a healing dance probably because of the origin stories. The traditional, original jingle dance is very light and very simple, so even a sick person can easily perform it. But as the years went by, another style slowly developed, one that is known as a contemporary jingle dance, which is a little more complicated and harder to perform. These dancers often compete with each other. What I personally find beautiful about the jingle dance tradition is that the idea of healing is not about the individual only. I saw videos of powwows dedicated to lost indigenous women, healing from generational trauma and memory for the ancestors. The jingle dance seems to be not only about healing, but also about unity and strength. It's a symbol of pride in a way. While sketching, I couldn't decide which color I want the dress to be. I know in many cultures, colors have a meaning, but unfortunately the internet provided no real answers. So I went to my friend again. She told me that the colors of the jingle dress are individual to each dancer, and they often represent her spirit name. I also learned that red is the color spirits can see best. I thought of painting the dress red, but my friend came up with a much better idea. She sent me a picture of a painting by her late grandfather, who she had a very close relationship with. She asked me to paint the dress in the same colors as a tribute to his memory. The idea of painting a jewel dancer as a stained glass figure had me wondering about the morality of such painting. Stained glass is a European art form, often found in churches. I thought perhaps it would be insensitive to draw indigenous people in the European art style. I talked about with multiple people who might be more familiar with the topic, and mm, the reactions were actually positive. So I kind of got the okay sign, the green light, and I did. They told me that it's okay as long as I'm not painting an indigenous person in a derogatory way and I'm not trying to appropriate any of the culture. So yeah, I could start working. I personally see it more as a sign of respect, because if you think about it, the people depicted in stained glass in different churches are ones of importance. They are ones who are holy or powerful in any way. The halo around a person's head can be found in many cultures across Europe and Asia. It represents the individual as a saint or a leader, somebody who should be worshipped. I surrounded the dancer's head with gold because this tradition is a sacred one. At some point I realized that involving my friend in this project tr transformed it from a simple idea to something much more personal and meaningful. So I decided to give it to her and to her family, kind of as a token of my gratitude. Not only for helping me so much with my education about their culture, but also just for being my friend, honestly. I like making nice things for my friends. 
I am so happy and so proud of the way this painting turned out. Like, I was filled with joy. And when my friend opened it, I was like, oh my god, my tiny dark heart just melted like a candle. I was... I, I can't, I, I don't know enough English to describe the joy I felt that moment. Art is powerful. Art helps us learn. And my quest as an artist is to learn as much as I can about different cultures, different art styles, different countries and history. Art helps me so much with really understanding all these things I'm learning. Perhaps I can even use it to connect to my own Slavic roots, something that I could never really do. I don't know about you, but I personally really enjoy this little dive into indigenous culture. It's truly fascinating. And I'm partially glad I'm here in Canada and I can truly experience it more authentically, or at least I have the chance if I wish to. I had kind of the opportunity to go to a powwow back in grade 12, but I was like depressed as hell during that time and I would have a terrible experience. And you know, I don't want to ruin the impression just because my mental health isn't good. I will link all my sources below in the description so you can read on your own and learn something new. Again, huge thanks to my friend and her family and everyone who helped me out with this project. It would not be possible without you. If you, the viewer, liked this video, please give it a like and leave a comment. And while you're at it, just press the subscribe button. Just gently, gently tap it. I will make more videos, so why not? Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Goodbye.